Oh, that's the end of that. It's going to be quiet today. I think Montreal Canadiens fans who normally join us might not be here, but maybe the Red Wings fans should get up because that was a good night for them. But, you know, small victories, but it's a victory. So congratulations, Detroit Red Wings fans. They faced the Montreal Canadiens last night, who has seen on Hockey Nation Live. So many of you guys were there. I think there was like over 200 people on that broadcast with Coach Frenchie. Uh, very exciting. Maybe it was more. I have to go check the uh, the uh, stream. But we saw the Detroit Red Wings in their full glory against the a little bit beat up Montreal Canadiens. Um, how good is Kirby Doc? Just going to get better. But lots of interesting stories on the Detroit side, in my opinion. So I think it's good news story on that side as well. Um, obviously, Montreal missing Cole Caulfield, which is really unfortunate. And first overall pick Slavkovsky. Uh, pretty good night for Jake Allen. What did you guys think of that? All right. So let's let's just dive right into this game. Oh, I forgot about this. Hmm. I guess it doesn't play on here. That's unfortunate. <laughs> um. Red Wings are now 21, 18, and 8, two wins in a row. This continues kind of the roller coaster pattern, but that's okay. You know, in the end, they're above 500, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, this was a pretty close game. The Canadians 20, 25, and 4. So the Canadians managed to get an overtime point, which is good. If you look at the shots on goal, the Red Wings 42 to 23. So that was a big part of the story. But, you know, it's really weird how the Canadian or the when the Red Wings lose the faceoffs, they kind of win the game. <laughs> this, is a, this is my imagination. 25 hits to 28 this is a pretty physical affair. Did you see how Michael Rasmussen, who had a pretty darn good night again, uh, was just he was dropped at one point. But there's no puck around the place. So I don't really see what happened, but he got dropped by the almost as big Kirby Doc. So I don't know if that was just like interference. I don't know why there wasn't a penalty on that. Maybe because it was in Montreal. 26 block shots by the Canadians to 19. So that's interesting. That's a high, high number. So, I mean, that means there were 68 shot attempts by Detroit. <laughs> wow, I did not look at that before. Um, somebody tell me what the hell GVA is because I don't even know. Well, um, one for two on the power play for the Red Wings, 0 for two by the Canadians. So not a ton. Well, it's nine penalty minutes. So that was interesting. Um, all right. So Michael Rasmussen did get the scoring rolling, making it one to nothing with his ninth of the year. Detroit up one to nothing in the first. And then Michael Pizzetta didn't take too long. A couple minutes later, he made it one one. And that's how we would go into the second. Jonathan Bergeron. You guys are, you know, you guys, you guys aren't necessarily Detroit fans. If you're, Mon well, if you're Detroit fans, you got to be excited about Bergeron. If you're Montreal fans, what do you guys think of Bergeron? This guy's got such sweet hands. He's so smart, and he's not a big guy. Although they're, they're listing him now as 5'11", 197. I'm not sure I believe that, but maybe. The weights are usually pretty accurate. So I don't know. Maybe. Maybe he is 5'11", and 197. Um, he is pretty tough to get the puck off <laughs> he finds open seams and when the pucks are on the net even if it's a weird angle he's able to get shots off so you gotta like this his eighth goal of the year i mean i think he's played 35 games let's we'll have to take a look at that larkin getting an assist Moritz cider though has been a big story his rejuvenation so to speak to last year's forum has been really instrumental here and a big part of that is him breaking up with ben Sherat. Raphael Harvey Pinard gets his second of the year from the before mentioned Kirby Doc, his 22nd assist. Savard, who I thought left the game at some point. So I don't know if we have an update on that. Um, they made it two to two. So on a shorthanded goal of all things, which is always a little disappointing, but that's what it was. Then Oscar Sundqvist, who, you know, he's a big, lanky guy. I want to see Soderblom come back because that line of Rasmussen, Sundqvist, and Soderblom was really interesting, although Rasmussen seems to be kind of moved up a little bit in the lineup. I, it seems obvious to me this guy is going to become the second line center, which is great news. Like big six foot six, six foot seven center that's got nice hands and can now skate. And he's a little bit mean. He got a penalty on that one play. But uh, what, Montreal wasn't able to capitalize on it. Uh, but, you know, Sunfist from Kubelik, who gets his 20th, so he keep. Keep an eye on Kubli. He continues to get points. So he's at least been, you know, contributing, which is great. Cider getting his 20th assist, second of the night. 
Then Rafael Harvey Pinard again getting his third goal, his second goal of the game, third goal of the season from Pizzetta, who getting his second point. So this is like interesting. Like if you're if you're the Montreal Canadiens and Harvey Pinard is getting three points, are you excited about this? Is just like is this lightning in a bottle? Is this going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he becomes a real good player. I kind of like him. But then we go into overtime, a broken play a little bit. Rasmussen almost had it, and then Fabry finished the deal. Sider getting his third assist of the night, guys. What do you guys think? Is Sider now back on track for being the Norris Trophy-type defenseman? I think so. I think he's really got his game turned around. The second half of the season is going to be very interesting. Robbie Fabry finishing this off. The former... Well, I guess he was a Mississauga Rebel, but did he play Toronto Junior Canadians at one point? I can't remember. These guys may have played in the Marlies together, actually. I think they played in the Marlies because he's like, he played at the McDavid age. So that, if you ever want to go see something really fun, I've said this before, go to YouTube and search, I think it's the 2014 or 2015, is that when it was? GTHL final. Maybe it's a little later than that now. And it was uh, the Mississauga Rebels versus the Toronto Marlies. And the Marlies, you'll see... 14-year-old Connor McDavid playing with the 15-year-olds, and Robbie Fabry was excellent. And you'll see a lot of guys that made it kind of AHL or NHL on those teams. Uh, Josh Hosang's on the Marlies. Uh, Sam Bennett, I think, is on that team. Uh, Roland McEwen's on that team. <laughs> so it's kind of always fun to go back and watch that game. That was one of the greatest series, which the Marlies came out on top. But, but the Rebels in the OHL Cup got revenge. They got revenge. That was Robbie Fabry's like really, woo, he showed he could lead that team and he carried the Rebels on his shoulders in the OHL Cup, beating the Marlies in the final of that one. That was kind of crazy. Anyway, great night for a couple players. Berger and I thought was real good. Rasmussen with two points, three assists for Cider. Those are all good news stories. Man, we are really re living off of the Billy Huso train here. We would love to have another goalie in Detroit. Let's get another goalie, guys. We got to figure this out. If they could bring in another guy that could play 35, 45 games, like somewhere in that range, I would really go a long way because Huso's doing pretty well, but I just he's never played this kind of volume, and I'm not sure. Is he that type of goalie? Is he a 65-game goalie? Is anybody anymore? You know, We need someone else that can kind of spell him, and I think his starts would even be a lot better. 19 minutes for the before-mentioned Ben Sherratt, 23 minutes for Philip Ronick. Jesse Wallman, 21 minutes cider 25 minutes you know who's really solid is jordan osterley this is you know a real understated pickup by the red wings they've got a few of these types of pickups so this is a good news story all right so this puts the detroit red wings still in sixth just behind the new york islanders the new york islanders are who they play tonight is it tonight it's tonight right yeah what day is today i don't even know where i am what what country am i in New York Islanders having a rough time of it. One, six, and three in their last 10, 23 and 22. So living off the fumes of their fast start to the season, but they are struggling. So I don't know. This could be good or bad news for Detroit, depending on how they come out. Detroit going back to back nights, which is unusual. Uh, Detroit now two wins in a row with beating San Jose and Montreal. Those were games that they should have won and they did. So that's good. Or they needed, to, you know, at least they were winnable games. Montreal didn't look bad at all, by the way. I thought Jacob. Allen actually played pretty well. Uh, so here we go. New York Islanders, Detroit Red Wings, next matchup. Oh, I'm so shocked. Billy Huso against Ilya Sorokin. It's like we just don't have another guy to go to. You don't go to Halberg, he's sub 900. But, you know, Huso's going sub 900, I think, just with the extra workload. So I'm not sure what the thinking is here. Sorokin's still a phenomenal goalie, but now he's 15, 16, and 4. So as Sorokin goes, it seems that's how the Islanders go. So he needs to get in the win column a little bit, but it seems to be other issues in that lineup. And Lou Lamarillo came out. When Lou Lamarillo comes out and says, the losing is on me, he's trying to take the heat off of, of our friend uh, Lane Lambert, which I get. You know, like he's a first-year coach. So that's – you want to be – I don't know. Like you don't want him to have an expiry because of this. He had a real good start to the year, but you know, this is a team that's built unusually. I don't know if it's built for the NHL game right now. You got one superstar in Barzal. He is a superstar. If you gave him someone to play with that was high end like him, 
but we have a lot of big guys that score junk around the net, like Anders Lee, and you got, you know, Brock Nelson's an excellent second line center, but he's six foot four and he's just a different type of player. You need a real, real high end offensive octane guy on that team, would be really helpful because Barzal would flourish. He is such a phenomenal skater. He's an impact player and he's just got that 4D in my brain. I'm going to win this game type of thing if you can activate it. Just my opinion. Billy Huso, though, 17, 11, and 5. So that is great. But then we know the save percentage keeps coming down. Two wins puts the Red Wings 5, 4, and 1 their last 10, 1, 6, and 3 for the Islanders. Three losses in a row. Mort Sider on the back of that three point night now has five points in five games. Lucas Raymond looking very, very good, in my opinion. Uh, he's looked great. Bergeron's looking great. I think mean, Rasmussen's looking real good. And I like Joe Valeno. So there's some good news stories with these young guys. Will they keep David Perron? I'm really wondering this. He's been really quiet lately. And we know he's a veteran presence. He's a big part of, you know, kind of putting some stability in this lineup. But is he a tradable asset? He absolutely would be, in my opinion. Does he want to go? I don't know. Maybe he wants to be here to help this turnaround. And I think he's a big part of it, but he has not been producing offensively lately. So that's not great. Uh, you look over on the Islanders' side, three goals in five games for Brock Nelson, so that is good news. What you don't see here is Matthew Barzell. Is he hurt? What's going on? I don't even know what's going on in the Islanders. We should take a quick look and just see. Uh, where's our good friend Matthew Barzell? Oh, no. We should take a quick look. And we're going to do that right now. Right now. Now, so Barzil, 42 points in 49 games, 11 goals in 49 games is interesting because he did not have a goal his first 25 games. But don't look now. He has had one assist his last five games. So this tells the tale of, I think, what's going on. As Barzil goes, maybe, you know, he's like the only high-end offensive octane guy on this club. I mean, that is not helpful. So overall, a good season, but five games like that is not going to help a team that really needs some scoring. So you look, one assist in five games, that's really one assist in six, seven, eight, nine games. He, he is like cold as ice. So he went on a big hot streak, but this is bad. So I don't know, is he hurt? Like, what is going on? Does he... He's just in a weird zone. You gotta get Matthew Barzel going. That is the key here. That is the stir stick that stirs the drink, along with the goalies, obviously. But you, you can't have this guy going ten games like this, and you're just gonna lose. That's what's happening, I think. You know, good, good that we've got good performance from our friend Brock Nelson. 43 points, 18 goals in 50 games. But this is really the key. You got to get this guy unlocked. I think you got to get him someone to play with. The depth of scoring is not here. And they got some old guys in the middle here. You know, Wallstrom not really in. That doesn't help. That was kind of their hope as a big goal scorer. Where's the skilled forwards? There's nothing. I mean, that's just what it is. This is the This is the rub. And I don't know if salary structure, this team is structured right. So it is what it is, you know. You've got money investing guys like Parise, Pajo. You know, you love Anders Lee. He's always going to be Anders Lee. But you need someone to play with Barzal. Anders Lee is like big, immovable object around the net. You're always going to get what you get from him and Brock Nelson, the two Minnesota guys. They need a high-end offensive octane guy for Matthew Barzal. So that's just what it is. All right, games tonight. Thank you, RJ, for posting this. Detroit versus Islanders, 7 p.m. Vegas versus Rangers, also 7 p.m. Eastern. Ottawa and Toronto. San Jose, Carolina. Ooh, that might be a rough night for San Jose. L.A. and Florida. Which Florida team will show up? Who knows? Who knows? New Jersey Devils versus Dallas. That is going to be a great game. Is that weird that we say that? But it is. It's going to be a very good game. Calgary and Seattle. There's another team that could use another body that can score is Calgary. you know, you got to give them credit. They've played a little better than we thought. Vladar kind of being the number one. What is going on? you got $7 bucks in 
invested in Jacob Markstrom, and that's not working out so far this year. That's You can't be on the bench forever, can he? Yes. Yes, he can. If Daniel Villar is the better goalie, keep riding him. Keep going. That, who cares about your salary? That's your problem. Columbus and Vancouver. Vancouver got absolutely wrecked in Rick Tockett's second game. That was not good. Was it 5-1 or 6-1? Or something crazy like that. That was like not a good game. Not a good game. This is more of what's going to happen to Vancouver. I think we're going to see this. What was the score in that game? Is it the night before? Um, where'd it go? His second game here. Yeah, six to one. They lost to the Seattle Kraken. Release the Kraken. Uh, notable loss last night for Boston. Tampa Bay sending a little bit of a message here, like, "Hey, boys, we're not going anywhere, and we can beat anyone we decide to." Victor Hedman with the game-winning goal, only his third of the year. Kind of interesting, and it's not like Pasternak didn't get in, and Marshawn was in. Uh, Brandon Hagel, 19 goals on the year. Did you know he had that many goals? That's pretty good. Braden Point, 28. That's pretty good. You know, but they you don't see a goal here from the before I mentioned David Pasternak. So they did a good job keeping him off. He got an assist in the game, but that's about it. Kucherov not getting goals. Stamko is not getting a goal. Like that's kind of how you got to, well, I don't know. The big guys in there, not in there, but Victor Hedman didn't make any any mistake about it. Getting his third of the year and a game winner and a big win, an emotional win for Tampa. Now Boston's got two losses in their last five games, which sounds strange because they've only got six on the whole season. Are the wheels falling off? Nah, they're going to be fine. You can't play 800 hockey all year, though. Holy moly. 183 goals for 101 against. <laughs> Holy crap. Nashville carrier about four or six weeks with an upper body injury. We lost to the worst team in the league at home. Avalanche not going anywhere this year. Oh, I don't think that's true at all. They were on like a six game winning streak. <laughs> They're going to be fine. The, the Avalanche are going to be in the playoffs and then we'll see. We will see what happens. We will see once they get in the playoffs, they're just going to try to limp their way there, get as healthy as they can. And then you never know. You just never know. Well, that is that is kind of all she wrote in a sense. If you look at Detroit's month, they started the month with a 5-1 loss to New Jersey. They lost a close one to Florida. Seems to have their number. And then they lost 4-1 to to, to uh, Toronto. But then they came back the next week with a surprise 7-5 win to Winnipeg. So that made them 1-3 on the month. And then they got a new surprise win in Toronto. So they were 2-3 and three on the month. They lost to Columbus, so that would make them, what, two and four on the month. They lost to Colorado, two and five on the month. They lost to Arizona, two and six on the month. Not good. Then they get in the win, a weird win, three and six on the month, beating Vegas. Okay. They lose to Philadelphia. So that's what? Did I lose track of this? Is it three and six or three and seven on the month? We have to count this up. So we got one, two, three losses. Four losses, five losses, six losses, seven losses, right? Whew, that's rough. One, two, three. So three and seven at that point, and now they've won two in a row. So they're five and seven on the month, just below five hundred. So you know, overall, not an amazing month. You would, they would. We'll see what happens. Do they get a win tonight against the New York Islanders, who are just struggling? Hopefully, the anecdote to that struggle is not. Sorokin versus a tired Billy Huso. That would be unfortunate. So check into that game tonight. Um, you've got Hockey Nation live tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Is that right? I think that's right. No, it's 8 p.m. Eastern. I can't keep track. The time's all messed up in my head. So it's 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, I think is the time for Hockey Nation live. So we will look for you on the broadcast tonight with Coach Frenchie. We will see who joins. Maybe Marco will join. Maybe Intertap will join. I will not join. I am going to the Harry Styles concert with my daughter. So there you go. I don't know if I'll enjoy it, but I'll try. Guys, have a wonderful day today. Keep your eyes on the Red Wings. Keep your eyes on the Canadians. Good game tonight. Islanders versus Red Wings. Winnable game. If they win, they will just finish the month one game, I think, below 500. And they had some overtime 
losses. So actually, I don't know if the yeah or wins. Do they have overtime loss? I think they had the one overtime loss. So maybe maybe they end up five hundred on the month. Actually, let's go back for one second. Hold on, because there was an OT loss here, right? Where was the OT loss? Oh, it was a shootout loss to Arizona. So I guess technically, that is an o, that's a point, right? So then if they win tonight, then they will be 500 for the month, actually. So that's not bad. That's where you kind of wanted them to finish. I don't think we have any delusions that this team's going to get into the playoffs necessarily and do any damage. They're not at that point. They need a goalie. They probably need a guy like Simon Edmondson or William Wallander or some other guy to come in and solidify the second pairing with Philip Ronick doesn't seem to be Ben Sherratt and they need a goalie, man. They just need a goalie. And if we had Verona or if we had like, if Zadina had turned out or, you know, Fabry's back, Bertuzzi's back, but you know, you need Bertuzzi to get back to being Bertuzzi where he's scoring a little bit. I think that will help. Noah Dobson, upper body injury. That is not good news for New York Islanders, but it is good news for Detroit as they try to at least drop to a 500 record exiting the month. All right. We will see you on hockey nation live tonight. Thank you so much for everyone for joining. Please hit the likes and subscribes, whether you are watching this live or after it's live. And we will see you uh, tonight. There's no broadcast for us. We're not going to do Detroit versus Islanders, but that game is tonight. And there will be a Hockey Nation live tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later.